great episode of Stick Like Blue Radio. I'm your host, Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, and this is the podcast to learn everything you need to know about how to create your dream business so you too can live your dream lifestyle. I'm the founder and creator of the Dream Business Academy and the Dream Business Coaching and Mastermind Program, and I coach entrepreneurs and small business owners at all levels how to build the business of their dreams. Today's episode is brought to you by Dream Business Academy. It's a three-day live event taking place. Our next one is in Providence, Rhode Island. That is September 27th, 28th, and 29th. This is a marketing and business building event where you will learn how to build a million-dollar platform. It's exactly what I've done to grow my dream business. You can learn more at dreambizacademy.com, dreambizacademy.com. And by the way, when you register, use the coupon code PODCAST at checkout, and you'll save $100 off. And right now, it's early registration. Again, that's dreambizacademy.com. That's enough of that. Um, I'm going to get to right to my special guest. Let me briefly introduce uh, Moran Pober. He is the founder of ABD Assets, and he's a former IDF, which is an Israeli Defense Forces soldier. He had extensive dealings with many entrepreneurial projects. He founded iTips, a top 100 app in 100 stores around the world, in the App Store, including the U.S., Canada, and U.K. <laughs> that is very cool. He has carried out extensive consulting assignments with many different companies. His current business, ABD Assets, seeks to acquire equity stakes in companies with growth prospects with a view to assisting them with their continued development, managerial, and strategically. And um, Moran, how are you doing today? I'm all good, Jim. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. You know, I was interested in um, uh, doing some research on your website, and I see that uh, one of your board members is Ace Chapman. I remember uh, talking and really hitting it off with Ace about a year ago, so that's a good board member to have on your team. Absolutely. Ace, Ace is amazing. He's one of my mentors as well, one of the people who, who got me into this world of, of deal-making, of investing, of buying businesses. So I'm, I'm really grateful to know him, and he's a great guy, 100%. And so you founded ABD Assets. When when did you do that? So ABD Assets, it's kind of like my, my holding company. It's basically my vehicle to go out there and seek companies to buy. Um, that's kind of like my main focus over the last two years. Um, yeah, that's, that's where, where I'm at with it. And so – what are your entrepreneurial roots like? Were your parents entrepreneurs, or how did you, uh, when, how, and when did you decide that you wanted to be an entrepreneur and not a punch the clock type worker? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be honest, I, when I was young, I wanted to be a, a soccer player, a football player. A soccer player depends depends where you're at in, in Europe. We call it football. In the U.S. probably soccer. But all my life, I wanted to be a a, a soccer player. And then in Israel, we have to go to the army. So I had a, a, an op- I had to decide, do I go to the army and do something meaningful or do I go and try to be a professional sport player? And because I, I was a pretty average soccer player, I just went to the army all, all in. And when I left, that's when I started. I knew that I can't work for anyone. I, I tried to work for, for people in the past, but it just didn't work out. I couldn't handle more than a few months. Like they always fired me. And I just realized that I have to do something on my own. And that's when I started doing things. Like I remember selling things on eBay when I was like 17. So that's that's how it all started, to be honest. Wow. And so right now you're looking to uh, buy existing businesses. I'm curious, how did you get into that? Uh, you know, a lot of people, they go out and they start businesses, grow them, sell them and things like that. But you're – your whole business model, I think, is about acquiring already existing businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, the biggest thing in the end of the day, the reason I even got into this world is after watching TV shows like Shark Tank, Dragon's Den, uh, even The Profit, which I don't know if you heard, you probably heard at least about. Oh, yeah, I'm a big fan. Of those TV shows. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I was, I remember, um, so I had this business that I was running, we, we created um, lots of advertising campaigns and promoted different products. And I remember sitting in my office and literally I, I hated my work and I made a lot of money back then doing that, that, that having that business. And I, I just asked myself, like, hey, what would I do if money was not an object? Or what would I do if I only had one year to live? Or just, you know, asking myself questions about what I want to do. Um, 
that got nothing to do with money. And that's when I realized, hey, I want to be one of those guys. I want to be an investor. I want to be a shareholder. I want to be an owner of more than one company. And that, that's kind of like what led me into this sport. Like I realized that I don't want to run businesses. I don't want to manage businesses, but I want to own businesses. And there's a very big difference between running businesses and owning businesses. And that's what led me to go out and seek mentors. And I mean, I paid more than six figures in the last 12 months or so alone just to find more mentors and people who could help me learn about this world. So yeah, that's, that's kind of like how, how it went through. So how long have you been doing this and what was your, what was your first deal? So you could say that my first deal was actually my, my app company. I mean, before I even knew about this world of um, leverage buyouts and acquisitions and corporate finance and private equity and venture capital and all, all those investment um, terms. <clears throat> so I, I bought um, my, my app company. I basically bought an unsuccessful app company from someone who had this app, who the app wasn't successful. And I saw an opportunity in the market place in the app store and i'm talking to you back then like many many years ago i I saw a similar app to the one i bought who ranked really high uh, in the app store and at the same time i found this guy who wanted to sell his app and i was like hey i'll buy this from you i bought it and that's how, how, how it started we basically we redesigned everything we changed everything i hired tons of developers to help me make the app better and back then we i mean Back then, to send paid traffic to install apps was something that no one did. And that's kind of like the first thing that we did that really drove the ranking high. I mean, I remember sending traffic from Facebook to install, to to potentially find people who will pay for the app or install the app. And people looked at me like crazy. And nowadays, I mean, there's tons of industries just about that. Um, so you could say that was my first deal, and it became really, really successful company. I mean... Uh, I remember looking at the app store and I was, my app ranked next to really like big, big businesses. Well, that's pretty cool. So um, when did you become an investor? I mean, you so you bought that. That was kind of buying it for yourself. When did you decide to become an investor in other businesses as a way to continue to grow your own uh, company portfolio, however you refer to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you could say that back then I had those, those thoughts, but I didn't know that it's possible. I mean, when you look at people and say, hey, they're an investor, everyone's thinking, hey, they got tons of money in their bank and they're just playing with it. And it's, it's not true 100%. I mean, many people, if you, if you look at the richest people in the world, many of them, they're building their wealth using other people's money or financial institutions or just um, other sources of capital other than just their own because I don't care how rich you are um, there's only so much you could spend and it's just a matter of cost of capital in the end of the day because even if you have tons of money in your bank account why would you want to spend that if you let's say you have money in your bank account you can go out there get um, let's say if you want to put your money in real estate you could get like 10% a year at the same time if you want to buy a business, you could leverage the business asset and get that money for like 5 or 6%. So why would you want to use your own money if you could use cheaper money other ways in, in other places and just grow your wealth that way? Um, it just that if you use your own money, it's, it's a scarce money. You're, you're very scared of losing all of your money. But if you can play with other people's money, uh, there's no limits to what you could do. And that's kind of like where I'm taking things. And um, that's my process. Um, how long it started ago? Yeah, you could say that while having the app company, I was already thinking about it, and I did like small deals, mostly um, equity for basically my value. So basically, I went to companies and I got equity in return for some value that I added to those businesses. Um, but now we're looking at really big deals, and yeah, that's that's kind of like where we start try to take things uh, at the Very moment. Very cool. Yeah, I was do I was um checking out your blog. You got an article there, what's so special about the million dollar mark in in your small business. That was a pretty interesting article. Why don't you talk a little bit about that with our audience? Um I guess the the main thing and that's why we're looking at businesses doing above 1 million a year in sales is that like I said, I want to own businesses. I don't want to run them and 
when business is making more than one million a year in sales, many, many times it's already got existing management team in place to employees that could basically handle that business without you being there day to day. And that's that's my main thing here when, when I'm looking to those type of businesses. I don't want to buy a business that is a, a, a kind of like a one-man show, that if I buy that business from that person and he's leaving the business, there's basically no business because all the customer relationships, all the basically all the brand, all the track record, it's all based on that one person. And usually when you go past the one million year in sales, you already have system in place. Many times you have a few employees in the business. Um, really depends on the industry, but usually have few employees who could take over. And that's why we like to look at those businesses because we want to own as many businesses as we can, but we want to have good people who will run them for us. Very cool. So let's stay on that track a little bit. Um, you know, how, to, how when you're finding uh, deals, uh, companies to buy, is there, are people waiting to sell their business into, I don't know, 40s, 50s, 60s, or are people selling earlier? And, you know, how do they, how do you know when it's a good time to sell your business? Yeah, so as for the question, if people sell their business, I mean, just, just search, just go to Google and search uh, business for sale. You'll find millions of, of results. Um, and some people, I mean, it, it, it's like if you'd ask me why would someone sell his house, uh, there's tons of reason why would people sell their business at, at any age. Obviously, many people out there want to sell their business because they want to retire. But many times people are just tired of their business. They're frustrated. Um, they want something else. And those are the main reasons that we're looking forward to buy businesses. I mean, many times people just sell their business because they're getting good offers from big companies. Um, yeah, so it, it could be all of those options. Um, for us, it's just a matter of, yeah, just finding, ideally, we want to find um, a good business with someone who just don't want to own the business anymore or manage the business anymore. And ideally, right. yeah, retirement is, is, is the best scenario for us because we could we could find really good businesses and many times in, in really good price. How do you go about valuing a business? I know that, you know, there's, you know, sometimes there's, whether it's two to three or four times your, your cash flow, your profits, or, I mean, are there I'm probably several different ways, but what, what are a couple of the common mm -hmm. ways? Yeah. So the, the simple one is uh, just multiples of EBITDA and EBITDA is basically just like your, your pre-tax profit. If, um, the listeners don't, don't know that, but basically, in the end of the day, uh, business is worth the amount that someone is willing to pay for it. And yes, we like to look at other acquisitions in the in the sector or just, I guess, common sense. But for us, we just we're looking for businesses. Um, we're looking to buy businesses for no more than a five times their their yearly EBITDA. Um, and that's that's it. That is a kind of like a fair price for us. More than that, it just it's really a decision of hey, do we, is it worth it? I mean, you could buy many businesses out there at four four or five times EBITDA. So why would you go out there and pay for business more than that unless you have an existing business that got um, what you could say some kind of synergies and cross selling opportunities, and then you come out from a, a different position and you're coming out as a strategic buyer versus a financial buyer. So I'd say as a, as a general rule, you wouldn't want to pay more than five times um, EBITDA. But if you have an existing business in that sector and you want to grow by acquisition, then you could potentially pay more because you could have a great upside um, from day one just by introducing different clients to different services between those businesses, which could give you great upside. And I mean, I think that's a great tip to anyone who got any business in any sector is the idea that you can grow by acquisition versus just growing organically. So growing organically would be to go out there and do things like sales and marketing in order to grow your business. And growing by acquisitions would be to go out there and buy businesses in order to basically have more revenues and more profits. And I mean, you could grow uh, by years worth of sales in literally in, in an afternoon if you just do one acquisition. If you have an existing business doing one million a year and tomorrow you're buying another business doing one million a year, you're now making two million a year. And I don't know many businesses who could grow that fast 
organically unless they're very new. Very cool. Um, so one other, it's kind of a little off track, but I, love, I actually really enjoyed your blog. You got six ways to profit from your vacation this summer. What was that about? <laughs> to profit from your vacation. Well, in the end of the day, in the blog, I guess that's a really old blog. I'm just, you know, looking for, for different ways to sometimes amuse myself and and just write about what, whatever I can. But what I like about this lifestyle of, of buying businesses is that, like I said, because we are owning businesses, we have other people who are better than us at managing those businesses. Like I don't want to bet, I don't want to manage a business because, to be honest, I just don't think I'm good at it. I think there are better people out there who I can pay a great salary or even let them retain some equity in the business, and they could do a much better job. So that would leave me with basically do whatever I want in my day to day, which is nowadays I just enjoy going out there, traveling, meeting business owners, talking to business owners. Um, it's fun. I literally, I think the vacation thing is just getting to a point where you enjoy your work as much as you enjoy the vacation. And there, there's nothing wrong about taking a vacation and drinking cocktails and all that. But the, like what I'm doing right now, to be honest, I never felt so fulfilled of doing work that is, first of all, really meaningful. I mean, we're helping business owners. We're either saving their business or we help them grow or we just um, help them with their lifestyle goals if they want to retire or sell. And it, it just a sense of fulfillment that you get from growing and giving that no vacation could give you. And, I mean, the lifestyle, you, when you own a business and you have a management team in place, you don't really have to do much in order to grow the business because you have other people do it for you. My way of growing nowadays is just going out there and talking to more, more businesses. And it's fun. I mean, I, I don't know other activities that are more fun than talking to business owners who sometimes owning those businesses for 10, 20, 30 years even. And if you're coming and you talk to them as a potential buyer, as a potential investor. They will tell you everything you want to know about their business, and it's exciting. It's literally exciting. You learn so much about so many industries, about so many business systems and processes. And I always tell people, if you want to learn about business, just try and put yourself out there as a potential buyer or an investor, and you will learn more about business in two months of talking to business owners who potentially want to sell their business to you than anything else. I mean, just just think about it. You can go out there and talk to a business that's making 10 or 20 million a year in sales, and he's really motivated to sell you the business. So you want to make sure that the potential buyer, he he's going to basically sustain the business, right? It is, it's his baby. It is everything that he built. So you want to make sure that you know everything, and he will tell you everything, and you can learn so much about business. And for me, it's exciting. Like, I'm learning so much. I'm getting to talk to really interesting people um, who treat their business like, I mean, that's their life. And it's it just, it's really awesome to see uh, how passionate people are about their businesses. And I'm happy that I can provide um, kind of like the safe pair of hands of a potential buyer who could take over their business and sustain the track record, the, the, the brand, the heritage, everything that that person built and just try to take it even, even further. Wow. How did you um we got about 5 minutes left. How did you uh get together with all with all your different partners and was Carl Allen kind of your first um partner role model or how did that how did how did you guys connect? Yeah, so so all of those people who you mentioned are um you could say partners, mentors, advisors. I learned from all of them. Carl is a, a really close uh, person to me right now. He's my partner at the moment. Um I'm working with him for m- more than a, I think like almost two years now, we're talking every week. And um, I learned a lot from all of those people, like like you said, like Ace, Dan Pena, Jeremy Harbour, Carl Allen, um, Cole Mirza. And Carl is the person I'm, I'm in touch with right now. And our goal and our business plan is we, we're creating this fund where we're going out there and we're going to build ourselves, our, whole, our own holding company. And we basically are looking for people who want to get involved, people who want to learn about this world of buying businesses. And we are willing to pay either a really nice referral fees for people who help us find businesses or equity in deals. So if someone's out there is listening and you want to learn how to buy businesses, even if they have no capital to invest, that's okay too. Um, you could watch us 
to deals. You could basically be on all of our calls with sellers. You could watch us negotiate deals. You could watch us finance those deals. And obviously, you could watch us manage those businesses. And you could have <coughs> equity in those businesses. <coughs> Sorry. You could have equity in those businesses just for helping us um, with some of this work because our plan is to buy so many businesses over the next few years. So there's only so much we could do ourselves. That's why we're looking for good people who could put potentially basically be our partners. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like our focus at the moment. Very cool. Well, that's been um, quite an eye-opening. I mean, it's, it's really exciting. Where do, you, where do you hope to see yourself in a, in a year or two? What's, what's the big goal for you? So um, I don't know if a year or two, but I look at people like Marcus Lemonis and other investors out mm -hmm. there, and, um, yeah, I, I would love to own, like, more than um, 100, 200, like Richard Branson owns like 300 plus businesses. Um, I'm not saying that I'll be there in two years, but if I'll get there eventually, I mean, that that's a good place <laughs> to aim for. Yeah. Good for you. Well, it's been a real pleasure meeting you. How can people uh, learn more about you and, and connect with you and your, your fun blog that I've been mentioning? Yeah, so either um, if you're really serious, just email me personally. I'll, I'm happy to, to figure out if it's a fit. We could potentially just go on on have a quick call. My personal email is uh, moran at abdassets.com. It's uh, Mor Moran. My name is M-O-R-A-N at abdassets.com. Well, Moran, thank you very much. It's great uh, pleasure meeting you, and uh, thanks for being on my program. Yeah, Jim, no worries. Thank you very much for having me. Hey, folks, that wraps up this special episode of Stick Like Glue Radio. I want to thank our sponsor, Dream Business Academy. Uh, remember, if you go to dreambizacademy.com and check it out, you'll get $100 off your registration when you use the coupon code PODCAST at checkout. Thank you to my editors, my assistants, all the people on my dream team for making my job look so darn easy. I'm your host, Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. I'm committed to helping you build a more profitable business faster. Come back next week for another great episode of Stick Like Glue Radio. Take care.